And, uh, okay, this session is about having fun all together and learning from each other, okay? The idea is to test applications with very brave developers that they propose us uh, um, uh, applications. We will try that, them, uh, us. I will let uh, my co-host uh, uh, introduce themselves in a few seconds. And the idea is that we give them feedbacks and also hear them with the context of development of the app and, and uh, try to give advices uh, to make it better, simply. So, Seb, I'll let you introduce yourself. Okay. Hi, everyone. I am Sebastiano Andrew and uh, I work at JetBrains. Lorica. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, I'm Lorica. I um, work as a UX designer, so I basically do this all day, all the time, and I love it. <laughs> and Taylor. Sure. Uh, hi, my name is Taylor, coming from Malaysia. Uh, I'm co-founder of Fabulous, uh, so happy to join these sessions uh, with everyone <laughs> again. Uh, and uh, me, I'm Eyal. Uh, I'm working as an Android developer at uh, Tag Heuer. Um, so, how will this work? Uh, actually, what you see on the screen is a device that we will all have access to. I mean, all all the, the, the host of this uh, uh, talk. So you see, I can manipulate it, and that's the same for all the costs. Um, each app will be a, a, a lead by uh, uh, one of our uh, uh, reviewers, but everyone in the room, in the, in the reviewers, will be able to uh, um, ask something or just give it feedback. Okay, uh, I think we can just start right now. Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah, so I will do the first review uh, just to give you the context that the first time we do that, uh, not live, but in remote, and uh, using like virtual tools for that. So, I mean, everything can happen starting from now, okay? Uh, also, we don't see the chat. So maybe Alex, if you want to uh, uh, um, give us some advices, uh, I mean, you can talk if you really think it's uh, uh, useful if we have a technical problem. And uh, anyways, Alex uh, is our buddy for this, uh, for this session. So maybe uh, uh, he will uh, give us some, uh, some uh, information. Okay, let's start. Uh, we'll start with Fanny's app. Fanny, nice to meet you. Hi, hi, Hall. <laughs> Can you introduce you, yourself in um, uh, just a sentence? Uh, my name is Fanny. I'm an Android developer. You can use two sentences if you want. <laughs> <laughs> and I developed the, the application called GoFigure. Do you want me to start explaining what uh, the application is? Uh, so the goal of the app is pretty simple. Sometimes you're watching a, a TV show and uh, you feel like you've already seen the actor, but you don't remember who he is. And the idea is to take Go Figure application and you, you take a photo of the actor on your, on your screen or your TV. And the app found out for you uh, who he is and uh, in which TV shows or movies he plays. So uh, just to mention that this app is developed for, by me and uh, a friend of mine, she's doing the uh, design part, and we are doing that on our free time. So free time. So please be kind, and we uh, we wish to to um, to put the application on play, the Play Store uh, next month. So it's still MVP, and we are still looking for the the right features to develop. So feel free to to propose anything, and thank you for for your advice. You're muted, Ayan. Uh, yeah, one thing, uh, I know that I will have to change the, um, the the device to landscape position, and I think it would be a problem for you, Edouard, right? I you can know. let's try it. Okay, let's try it all. Uh, let's try it. So, we launch GoFigure. GoFigure is this app. Let's launch it. So, what we have here is a first screen uh, with a kind of splash screen, I would say. Uh, do you really need the, 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 the splash screen of this app? No. Okay. <laughs> so, maybe it's not very useful. Uh, <laughs> also, if I add 
Okay, let me just enable the camera. Okay, uh, the the picture that you are see right now is just the picture coming from my webcam through the internet. So on Genymotion Cloud. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, we are using Genymotion Cloud to share, as a shared device uh, right now in the team. It's extremely useful. And uh, thanks to them to supporting this uh, uh, live stream because they offer us the, the, the credit for that. Um, and also, okay, uh, talking about the stream, um, there is just something that is not correctly supported on the emulator. Is that the uh, uh, the, the the app? Um, sorry, the emulator still sends the stream not perfectly good for the app. So you will see if I take a picture of me. Okay, let me. <laughs> Yeah, you see this, uh, this is coming from the emulator, anyways. So, let's say it's a good picture, and I accept it. So, uh, I took a picture, now I need to uh, validate it, and it's supposed to recognize me, right? Well, not you necessarily, right? <laughs> yes. To recognize me as an actor, as, as yeah. a famous person. <laughs> and uh, apparently, I'm Jason Lee. <laughs> and I played uh, on many things that I don't really know. Do you know this guy, guys? Uh, I think he's the main actor from um, My Name is Earl. Oh, yes. Okay. Ah, great. Uh, I loved it. Uh, okay. But he also played in uh, Alvin and the Chipmunks. <laughs> okay. Do you want uh, someone, um, uh, Taylor, maybe you want to try uh, uh, to continue the review? Or I think you were playing with it. Yeah, yeah, I am. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so um, I think the, the, the first thing that I noticed is that uh, it's, it's really great that uh, once you launch the app, uh, you're already in the camera mode. So you can already capture the, you know, the face uh, without going through, you know, uh, one tap or two taps. So that's really great. Um, I mean, first impression is that uh, I think the color choice is pretty, pretty good. Uh, I think uh, it's quite unique. Uh, it's different from most of the apps. So I think this is something that you can keep using and improve it in terms of, you know, for example, in, in your case, the, the, the navigation bar and the status bar is not colored. So, you know, that, that can be done to, to create an immersive experience. Um, I, I like I like how the way things are laid out. Uh, the only one thing that I notice is, uh, let's say, the result is twenty six percent of uh, confidence for Jason Lee. Uh, it will also mean that you will have some other person in the different confidence level as well. So probably you it will be useful to display them as well. So when when you know, when the users see, oh, this is probably not the quite right person, then they can still search it so they can find the right one and then they will tell you that this is the result. And I don't know in your back end whether you you uh, you receive the uh, results, like uh, whether this is accurate or not. So if you did, then maybe it can help you to improve the accuracy or something like that. But yeah, generally, I, I, I think I really like how the way it flows from simple camera app capture it and then goes to the result um, simple and straightforward yeah thank you thank you as a, as a user um, if I can add something on that uh, <laughs> I mean, not exactly on what you said, but uh, uh, as a user, you know, I tried the app just before and I was thinking, uh, oh yeah, I will be able to see if I'm looking like a star or something. And I've been pretty much disappointed at this moment when I opened the app because it was using the, the not the front face, uh, front, front face camera. But uh, the the one you have the rear camera, I think, and uh, but which is totally uh, uh, makes sense if you want to take a picture of something that that is happening on your TV, but really not, um, disappointing when you want to take your own face. And I I don't know, but maybe there is a use case for you, having something fun like we are doing right now, uh, um, to uh, uh, um, open the front camera or being able at least to open the front camera. Uh, for that, because then when you want to take a selfie with that and you are with your device, I can show you because I have it right here. It will be very, very uh, uh, strange. Look, because 
Uh, there is only so I will okay. Just can you help me <laughs> and tell me? Okay, now. Oh, you're you're confusing Skype. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh, your device is completely gone. <laughs> it's like Inception. <laughs> so you see that uh, if you want to 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 take a picture of yourself, you have to like, oh, maybe I'm here. Go okay, that's good. Go, 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 also... go. Is it working? I don't yeah. know. Okay, you know this experience? I I don't know. Uh, maybe that's not your first use case, but uh, yeah. oh, Adam, there is. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, I would also I would also add on to that that maybe it could be useful uh, to allow users to uh, upload their own pictures that they might have taken previously, or maybe they're coming from say a screenshot or something like that because that might be useful. Yeah, I don't know if that's a main feature, but it's something you could consider. And also testing what I was uh, uh, weirdly uh, doing. Um, it will be very interesting to have a sound or at least a vibration of the device when you click and when you hit the yeah. uh, screenshot, uh, the, the, sorry, yeah, screenshot or snap. Uh, yeah, I, I had some sounds on the last version uh, and uh, I was not sure if sounds were the, was a good idea, so thanks for the feedback. That's my feedback, but I don't know yeah. if you have other uh, point of views. Lorica, maybe. Yeah. So, um... I definitely second that, well, having tried the app, the first thing I tried was taking a picture of myself to see who do I look like. And uh, <laughs> that, that's a, I think that's a fun twist to this so that could be easily uh, or sort of easily maintained as well. Um, but in that case, I guess, also building on the idea before that you only had a 25% hit for this particular actor, which other actors? So maybe a list of the actors and showing the percentages or something. Yeah. Um, in terms of the process is something that I looked at. So you, when you start the app, you see the, I will, I will actually go back here. So now you start the camera and here we have AL. Now um, it would be really nice if maybe you could use some face recognition or something, because the thing is you need two confirmations now to get to the result. And I think that could be optimized. So maybe when you recognize the face, just asking, okay, is this what you want to, what you want to use? Or now we take a picture and then here you also have to do another confirmation. So maybe with the backend, there will be too much back and forth, like requesting it, but it would be really nice if it's a one snap thing or if it automatics, automatically recognizes that there's a face here and, and you could go on. I don't know if that will work with this particular picture, but hey. <laughs> so sorry uh, that the main message of this review is first, your first showcase is not exactly the one we were expecting <laughs> when we opened the app. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I have uh, a... Just, uh, I just have one one more quick point here, and that is in terms of the immersiveness that uh, Taylor also mentioned. I would, uh, when looking at the the photos here of the um, of the video here, this view could be emphasized by having like a, the picture bigger and like maybe more immersive somehow. So like looking at this view as well, maybe even the trailer for the movie. From YouTube or something, yeah. if yeah, that's I... a... oh yeah, yeah, that's all for me for now. <laughs> Seth, you have something to add, I think? Uh, yeah, so just a small thing uh, with the, actually I have two small things. One is with the results accurate thing you have at the bottom. Uh, first of all, I have to say, I love this. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I really like the animation. Yeah. It's really nice. So well done for that. Uh, yeah. I would say you probably don't need a yes no thing because, like by default, is not checked. Uh, it neither yes nor no. Maybe you can have a this is not who I'm looking for button or something like that or or a link or something uh, because you, most people probably would only bother saying no. Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm seeing with some beta testers, uh, lots of people say no, but when it's okay, they don't, they don't say it. So maybe you can simplify that yeah. call to action a bit. Uh, and the other thing, 
uh, that I wanted to mention is on the uh, share functionality. When you share something, say new message to yes, sure. So basically, you don't get any text, and you get just a screenshot of the of the current results. Okay, so maybe. Yeah. Some text, it's real. <laughs> yeah, so maybe say. maybe you, instead of sending a screenshot, yeah. maybe which has buttons and those things that don't, aren't really useful, maybe you can prepare an image that is formatted, especially for sharing it, especially on, on social media where images tend to be horizontal instead of vertical, that, that, could, yeah. that could improve the engagement in, in sharing. And maybe including also the original image would be interesting in terms of sharing. Because, yeah. hey, look at me, I look like this person. Good. Um, one, one more thing to add from my side. So the first time that I used this app, I took a photo of myself and I got like a 1% match. And I would kind of think maybe it would be beneficial having a we didn't find a good match state as well, and not just the same one all the time, which says zero to 100% match, but maybe no good one found. Here are some alternatives or something. Okay. Yeah, just uh, one thing that I noticed is that uh, if you try to take uh, a non face photos, it will say something went wrong. So I, I think that. Maybe it can be improved in the way that things that uh, you know no face found or something like that. That will uh, that will make it uh, a better message uh, instead of saying something went wrong and then maybe the user doesn't know what's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yes, good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Ideally, if you have face recognition in the main camera screen, then you can only enable the the take a picture button when there is a face detected, so you can skip the whole problem yeah. altogether. Yeah. And also avoid having confirmations and everything, because if you do face recognition, you can show on the preview what face you're looking at, so you don't need uh, confirmation. Highlight on the face. Yeah, like cameras do. Yeah. That looks like you have uh, you. We cannot see caching you. problem. Yes. And <laughs> I, I will stop muting me. Uh, so we learned something. If you stretch Brad Pitt, you have Hayley Williams. No, it's. It, I think it's the problem of the camera because I use Brad Pitt a lot for my test, and Brad Pitt works in the app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but uh, uh, you stretch because of the emulator. Look at this. Yeah. You were also showing the wrong uh, picture. Like you, you still had the um, Jason Reitman picture instead of Hayley Williams. So you might want to double check that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yep. Yeah. Same. Yeah. You still yeah. still get. Who's Elliot White? I think it's because <laughs> they didn't uh, move the emulator on. Oh, uh, in landscape. Let's yeah. try. And uh, yeah, I think the people don't see it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. It, it will come back. <laughs> Let's try it. Uh, pop, 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 pop. Oh, that's there. Sorry. <laughs> it's crazy on the other way. I I don't think the camera thingy. Yeah. On yeah. I mean that just for work. for simple test. Anyways, yes. I'm very disappointed because uh, during my test, uh, they, it told me that I was looking. Uh, like, let's try again. I uh, yeah. This one should work. Look at that. <laughs> oh shit! I was super sorry, to man. Like, no. uh, uh, Jason Momoa. He's my sozzy, of course. <laughs> Anyways, do we have other things to add on the uh, on this app? No, I think. Oh, great be... job so far! Thank yeah. you. Really cool. Feedback. Keep yeah. keep yeah. at it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, try to see if the angle of like see who you look like works for you. Yeah. yeah, that could be an, another way to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's really cool that you're two women developing the app. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. go. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Fanny. 
Uh, so now the next one is uh, confinement. So uh, Alex, uh, I mean, uh, who's the? Yeah, can we call the <laughs> developer of confinement, please? This is gonna be fun to test. <laughs> yep. Hey there. Hello, Cyril. Hello. I want to you check was a uh, confinement zone. Is that uh, application? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know <laughs> names. I'm sorry. No problem. So maybe I can uh, introduce myself. Sure, sure. Uh, can you see me because it's uh, a little blurred in my screen? It's fine. You're blurred, but uh, we can hear you correctly. Okay, cool. So uh, I'm Cyril Cadore, and I'm uh, Android um, engineering manager at Blablaka. Uh, and I'm here to get feedback on my personal app, uh, which is called uh, Confinement Zone. Um, so what is the point of this app? Uh, it's to make sure that everyone can uh, respect the um, confinement uh, regulation of the French government, which is uh, don't move away uh, from your own location more than one kilometer straight. Uh, so to what? What are the main features? Um, firstly, see your confinement zone on the map. So I use the uh, Google map uh, to be able to, uh, to show a map. Uh, and uh, to see your movement on the map. Secondly, uh, the possibility to easily create your attestation, uh, to be able to go out for your daily work. And finally, to get notified when you come closer to the confinement uh, zone limit or when you go outside of the confinement zone. Uh, to clarify, the zone is completed thanks to your own location and uh, to the one kilometer radius. Um, and about, uh, about the attestation, I've cloned the official website. Uh, to create your attestation and to add a local storage feature because it can be very painful when you want to, uh, to enter your information each time you want to, uh, to go out. Um, pay attention that everything is stored in local storage and uh, there is no data sent in uh, any server. <laughs> um, I can speak about uh, what is behind the hood. Uh, so be aware that... Yes? Cyril, I think it should uh, it should be good to start the review right now cool. and uh, if it's in the conversation it doesn't it, it makes sense of course you you will be able to add the information okay yes so let's go for it okay uh, seb are you okay to take it uh yeah, cool cool so we start the app okay we start with request to access device location that makes sense i'm okay uh where is your home uh, that's a good question. Uh, this is going to take forever. Okay. So let me just select the location on the map. Uh, yes, Daldic seems like a good place. Good. <laughs> okay. So uh, I see that uh, the, the app UI is very simple. The, the the share icon on top left isn't centered usually and it's a bit annoying to me but i promised myself i wouldn't do this <laughs> i didn't put it in my notes and yet <laughs> here i am doing it <laughs> but i have to say i really like <laughs> the viruses yeah. on the map <laughs> just roaming around <laughs> yeah. it's very nice so um Basically, right now, the, the location that the device is set to is the same as home. So the app is telling me uh, that I'm home. I'm zero meters. It's fine. But say I want to go for a walk so I can start the walk. Uh, it's keeping a timer of the duration, which is nice. There's a clearly labeled stop the walk uh, button there. Um, there's the usual um, go to location and share. Uh, to actions in the top. Uh, let's assume I'm moving a bit. You have to bear with me for a second because I need to go into the 
settings of the device and move, and then the magic happens. So I'm going to move a couple of places. I'm probably going to go out of the zone. Oh no, <laughs> I was out of the zone. So I, I like that you have the illustrations. <clears throat> One thing that I did notice when I was testing this uh, beforehand on my own, uh, is that if you go to the background, so if, you, if the app is open and you leave the confinement zone while the app is in the background, you don't get any alert. You don't get the vibration, you don't get anything. And it's something that I would probably want. It's like, I'm not entirely sure maybe there's a long road and I don't know exactly where the, the, the zone ends. So that, that could be something that could be interesting. Um, uh, there was also some minor problems with being in background uh, because you have the, for, the foreground notification. Well, not now, for whatever reason, uh, but you do get it. Yes, you need to go uh, on background if you want to. Yeah. Have, uh, okay. So you have it and you tap in, it's fine, but uh, it did happen at some point that even if I had stopped it, I still had the not, uh, notification I'm going and I had no way to dismiss it. So you might want to double check. Yes, uh, the only way is to quit the application by by doing a back action, yeah. Uh, but that's fine. I mean, I, I like that there's a summary thing at the end. Maybe visually speaking, it could like e either be a separate screen altogether, maybe not a, a dialogue. Um, and uh, I like the fact that you have illustrations. Condolences seems a bit tragic. <laughs> maybe. Yes. Uh, maybe. My wife said the same thing to me. <laughs> My wife yeah. said. Maybe she's a very good find, advice. Uh, <laughs> yeah, listen to her, she's right. <laughs> uh, but I like that you have a, a very good recap here that says um, that you, you have traveled this much and this is the farthest the way you've been and this is the amount of time. Uh, one thing, actually, I like this idea. I like the app because just last week my father asked me pretty much the same thing, but I am in Italy, so obviously the rules are slightly different. We don't necessarily have a time limit, but we do have a distance limit, which used to be 200 meters and now it's 500. So maybe it could be useful for other people outside of France to be able to say, mm, I want to have this rule, but not that rule, or I want to change the time or the, or the distance. Uh, because then I can just not redo the same app myself and just send yours to my dad. <laughs> um, that said, uh, I think, okay, I'm going to move back inside of the location one second. Da -da -da. Let's say I'm here, should be inside. Okay, great. Good. So mm, there are a couple of things uh, that I would add to this. Uh, I like that you have the button here for the certification, although that's a very France specific thing. That makes sense. Um, again, in the, in the optics of other people from other countries, maybe uh, wanting to use this, it could be useful to have the ability to add more, or at least when you first up the, open the app, say, I live in this country. And then, but then you, you would have to maintain that list. So I understand if you don't want to do that. Because um, I imagine this is like a side project thing. So it's, it's all right. <laughs> um, I had another couple of things in my notes. Oh, yes. Uh, when you're running in the background, so let's say I start the walk and I leave the app and I have the notification here, it would be nice to have an action on the notification to be able to stop the, uh, to stop the, the application and also to open the, the, the page to make the um, certification as well, because you never know. Maybe you need it uh, and you don't want to open the app, it's just like one less stop. It's always useful for, for people. Um, yeah, I think that was pretty much it for me. I don't know if anyone else has... I'm not a designer, so I leave the, the actual graphical... Yeah, you, you, to... <laughs> that's already make you a designer. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, the only one thing that I would like to add is uh, if you, um, I'm trying to stop it first. Um, I think maybe this is something related to technical, but uh, if you pick back, it's actually actually you if you want to shut down the application, which, which is something that I think most of us saying that this is not necessary for the app, for any apps. Um, so I'm not sure whether this is related to technical uh, uh, requirements, but uh, I mean this is not something that usually will be shown for an app because yes. you should just go back. Uh, if you stop already, there's no stop. Walk, um, if you are not tracking anything, when you click back, you should just rest everything in the background and you should not use any resources. Um, I mean that that's at least when I see this, that I think this should be improved. Yeah. Okay, okay. I, I, I use this um, dialog because uh, when you start the work, I don't want I don't want that the user when they click on the back button to uh, to exit the application because the start work was running. But here, uh, you didn't start the work, and yes, sure, we can we can remove this dialog in that case. Yeah. So, uh, to be honest, even if the, the the work is ongoing, you have the foreground notification. You shouldn't really try to stop users from leaving the app. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Uh, about the behavior, because uh, the the foreground service is running when uh, you go on the on background. So if you exit the application, it will uh, kill the foreground service. It's like that. Uh, I implemented. The, I don't know if I'm clear about that. Yeah, but the, the, what I was trying to say is like it, it's fine that you have a foreground service, and it's fine that if you're not in a walk, then yes. you don't you kill the foreground service when you when the user yeah. puts the app in the background. Yes. But then, in in the other case, the case where the user is during the walk and they press back, then they have the, the foreground notification that tells them that that's still running. Yes. So there is no need to tell them don't do that, and you don't need to kill the foreground service in that case, obviously. Mm -hmm. Just keep it running, and if they want to stop it, they have the notification for that. Okay, okay. The button on the notification, right. We got a few feedback from the uh, chat, which is pretty uh, creative and interesting. Uh, they want you to add a, a voice control uh, um, feature where okay. when it, you cross a cup, he asks you, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> and and then you just have to tell I'm going to groceries, and we have to recognize yeah. this and generate the attestation point. I'm not sure it's very legal. I'm not sure it's very moral, but it acts, at least you have the the point of view of our chat room. Thank you, yeah. guys. And you can shame at me if uh, if uh, <laughs> if uh, if you need to go to jail. <laughs> I I have a question and uh, some some feedback. Um, so the question is, how does it work with the paperwork actually? Because I'm based in Switzerland and we don't need to file paperwork or stay a certain meters away from home. So how does it work if you want Let's if start. you want to go for a walk? Let's try it do? on the app. I think you will have a good uh, answer through yes. the app. Okay. So stop the walk. And uh, Lorica, do you want to do it? Yeah, so I'm just starting the walk. You click on the button. Oh, yeah. no, it's the button on, on, on the button right. Okay, stop the walk. Sorry, I take it. And then you click on the button. I clicked on the button, and then that's pretty simple. Oh, no, that's a okay. dedicated website. Yeah, that, um, I said earlier it's a dedicated website because uh, on the official website, there is no local storage. And it can be painful uh, if you uh, had to enter information each time I want to generate the attestation. Oh, but if your user already uh, opened it in, in Chrome or some uh, um, uh, browser with autofilling, it will yes. remind that and it will autofill. But that's what's uh, happening to me. I didn't see that all the information was filled because only your name, last name, uh, but about your uh, birthday. Uh, the official website was not working for, for that. Okay. So, so what about I, instead using the official website and showing it in a web view for your app that you can manipulate in the app? No, it's, it's not possible because uh, the, the button was not working. Uh, the, gener the, the button which triggers the generated uh, 
process oh, okay. is, is not working. So I, I've just cloned the I've, I've just cloned the website. I, I didn't want to uh, to go deep in the code to uh, to repair this. Uh, maybe maybe put a notice on the website that says this yeah. is uh, this is not me trying to steal your data or something like that because yeah. otherwise it looks a okay. bit suspicious if it's sure. identical but with a wrong domain. Yeah, sure. Definitely. All right. So coming back to the app, um, so when you want to go for a walk, you're expected to have created this uh, uh, certificate before you head out, right? Right. Is that something that you would be forgetting about at some point? I'm thinking, would it make sense having a start your walk? Did you really prepare your paperwork? Are you ready to, to head out? Yes, sometimes you, you can forget about it. Uh, yeah. it, it happened uh, for me and, last time. Yeah. So if you haven't, then you could have a quick access button to create the, the form on your website as well. Yeah, okay. Um, the other thing I noticed, and this is, I mean, I, I guess this has to do with the app being rather simple UI-wise. There's not a lot of things that you can do, but I noticed you still have your home button here. And from here, you can change your location of your home. And it's a very easy access feature, but you might not move so often. But okay. yeah, yes. <laughs> sure. But that's uh, that's all from my side. Cool. It looks cool. I love the illustrations, by the way. Very nice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love cool. how the virus um, going around, and I was trying to check whether it's is it really there's a virus around there. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, no, no. It's a fake location. <laughs> the, the next step is to make like Pokemon Go, but with coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to. You don't have to find them uh, and to, but actually to avoid them. <laughs> you want to catch them? All right. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> no, no, the other way around. <laughs> cool. I think we are all good. Uh, yeah. Do you have something to say, Sail? No, no, thank you very much for your feedback. It was very, very interesting. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you for your contribution. Again, thanks also to Fanny. Uh, that uh, I mean, uh, I already said that. That's really brave. And uh, it's hey, nice that you like you it. Stop saying that we are making people, <laughs> so, you know, putting people in a discomfortable position because then they believe it. We're trying to be nice here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we try to. But you know, that's pretty, pretty, uh, I would say that you must be very brave yeah. to uh, 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 receive feedback like this, I think. And and you are, definitely. Right. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Cyril. I think we can call uh, right. Sainish from uh, Vestiaire Collective right now. Is Sainish joining? Cool. Uh, yes. Am I there? Can you yes, hear me? Yes, you're there. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, sorry, uh, just a message to uh, Alex, if uh, Guillaume from Muquiz joined, uh, just let us know on Slack, maybe. Okay, so should I... Uh, sorry, I don't have your camera. Um, um... Okay, we are just fixing something uh, from uh, Silish setup. You can... You can start, uh, yeah, telling Salish what's this app and okay. uh, what are you doing in, in Um Yeah, so Vestir Collective, it's, uh, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so Vestir Collective, it's, uh, it's an e-commerce platform uh, for luxury, uh, for resale of luxury products. The app has been there since 2014, November, and um, I joined the team uh, last year, and the, the idea is to make the the whole platform mobile first and we are here to gather all the feedbacks that you guys have to you know to, to bring the app to a more you know really mobile first approach so yeah you have all the all the, all the basic ingredients of an e-commerce uh, uh, app you have uh, you have all your your home page with all the deals and everything then you have catalog uh, searching you know with the filters and everything then you have uh, product pages you have uh, uh feeds with the community you know what, how the community is doing you have notifications you have a uh, profile and and you have a, a section where you can sell stuff so yeah that's that's pretty much the, the summary of the entire stuff that's it cool 
Taylor, Lorica, who wants to uh, uh, take care of this one? Lorica, you want to do it? Or... <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I can, uh, I can start for sure. So um, let me just get out of the app in the emulator. Okay. That's the orange icon. Yes. Are we already logged in? Nope. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but uh, I can add um, the, the credentials to subscribe to the new account. I mean, I have it uh, on my okay. notes. So um, I would like the first part to be about the non-logged-in experience, actually. But yeah. uh, in general, uh, it looks, I mean, it's, it's clean, it looks nice. Um, visually, it's, uh, yeah, I can tell a lot of work has gone into it. Um, yeah. That's that's nice. Um, one thing that I would uh, what that users usually do when they open an app for the first time is explore the app and like look at the different sections. And here we have in the main tab bar, um, you you use them to explore, but you are faced with this login wall. And it takes yeah. the navigation away from you, and it it kind of blocks you, and you have to like make a clear action to get back. And if you could just persist the navigation bar there, that would help at least the user understand what they can and cannot do um, without having to go in each each and every one. Yeah, um, that's that's a fair point. Yeah. Yeah. But in respect to login, um, actually, yeah. uh, uh, I think three months back, the login was not the gate was not even open so even before you launch the app i mean as soon as you launch the app you have to log in first to actually get into it so we just move the gate a little bit you know deeper into uh, the hierarchy okay. yeah which is really positive because letting them explore might entice the users more to yeah. actually sign up for the account yeah definitely yeah i think that uh, having uh, at least the news feed showing something that would be interesting um, I mean, cell notification and profile, maybe, yes, you need to knock in, but news feed, maybe it's something that you can view, consume without actually registering. So having that wall is actually stopping people from exploring the app further. Mm -hmm. And the same goes for the bag. So if you go to your, uh, like your, your cart, which is the bag on the top right, then that also asks you to sign in. It's like, just show it empty. For now, it, it should be yeah. fine. You want people to see, oh, okay, it's empty, I can fit it in. Yeah. No. Yeah, it's, it's a bit uh, because of the implementation details. You need a session, you know, to. to, to yeah, to I'm release. sure. I'm yeah. sure there's technical yeah. reasons yeah. Uh, for that. Yeah, uh, cool. Yeah. Um, there were also some things. It's nice because you can already search for things. So let's say we search for a handbag. Um, well, Let's search for Louis Vuitton for simplicity's sake. <laughs> um, and price. And, uh, <laughs> those are nice, the quick links. Um, then you might want to go in to view the details, and again, you get this paywall. The thing now is yeah. if I go back, <laughs> it kind of loses where I was. Exactly. So now you start over on the home page. Um, okay. And if you wanted to continue browsing, so that would also be nice. Maybe that's also tied to a session, though. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just. It's yeah. one of the biggest concern with the, the, the way the stack has been maintained in the entire app. It's, mm. it's a bit on the buggy side. Let's say we need to rework it, the whole yeah. stack uh, of the this, this does work when you're logged in, though. I noticed. Right. Check that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you also want your users to feel welcome before they sign in or sign up. So that would be nice to have a look at. OK. Um, so. Unless anyone else has something regarding the non-logged in state, um, I would proceed to log in and uh, do that from it. Yeah. So I'll just add some one thing that for the non-logging, uh, like uh, what, what you did just now when you try to search, um, when you tap on the search bar, I mean, the most intuitive way is the keyboard should already show up that where you can already start typing and search. Uh, I thought that would be uh, a very intuitive way for them because they probably already have something in mind to search or just yeah. to try out what, how, how powerful is a search function. Um, 
And also one small thing about is, is about the top left uh, icon. That uh, is something that probably related to the back stack as well. Uh, the way how it was showing the menu and then go back to the home page, it's, it's, it's kind of confusing. Like, it is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I would add one small thing on, on, on that, which is when you're on the home page and you tap the search bar, then the, the top, like the search bar itself, changes it doesn't have a gray background anymore the, the text changes size so maybe you can try to get a consistency between the fake search bar and the actual search bar yeah uh, and also keep showing the like the, the keep the same contents of the up bar we are sort of bringing a uniformity in the design yeah. of the two toolbars in general yeah and, and sorry no, it's one last thing i noticed while we're right. here um when you go in the categories, for whatever reason, when you're not logged in, they show in French, regardless of your system locale. When you are logged in, they show in English. Yes, yeah, because it takes the device. Uh, when you when you log in, we create a session, and uh, all the session parameters are from the API. But when you're not logged in, we take the device uh, okay. Just to let you know, this device is equivalent to a Pixel 3, and it's uh, the local is English. Yeah, I didn't say that at the beginning. Okay. Uh, there is something I can add on this. Uh, if you select the one cate top categories, uh, oh no, that was this. Okay. I had a different. I think it was not on this page, but uh, I there there is another way to have categories, right? Okay, uh, I think I will tell that about that later. But there is yeah. something I noticed on the on the design, which is uh, pretty interesting. I wanted to know if it's really intended. There is this uh, browser look in your app. You see that uh, the uh, journals, yeah, yeah, on all the journals and a few things that you can click on on the at the top of the home screen. You have like the loader on top and titles, and it's really like a browser. Is it like something intended? What is the uh, well, what, what, yeah, it is kind of intended because before we had web views to support all of this and then we wanted to do everything native. So, uh, yeah, you get the browser kind of look with all these journals and then pages where people comment and then, yeah, so it is kind of intended. Yeah, and actually for me it's not really a bad thing. Uh, I would say that if it's a choice, yeah. uh, it, it, it recalls also that uh, this is a website uh, I don't know exactly what is your graphic, more on the mobile or maybe more on the mobile now, uh, but uh, okay. But it's pretty nice, and the app is pretty uh, uh, stylish, really. It's supposed to be a luxury reset. <laughs> exactly, no, that, that's a good thing, I mean. Okay. Sorry, that was me clicking. Uh, I just had, wanted to show one thing. In the categories menu, uh, you can get to, oh yeah, you need to be logged in. We'll, we'll see you later. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Um, I have one here, though, just regarding uh, standard patterns. So here we have the arrow down, which usually indicates an accordion that expands, but this seems to take you to a separate page because you don't have the scrolling to the other sections anymore. I mean, it's a small nitpicky thing, but just, yeah. yeah. I think there are other kind of categories somewhere in the app, right? Uh, you have the when you, when you click on the search icon on the toolbar, you have uh, like all the filters that you can apply on the search. Oh yes, that was uh, that's what I was looking for. Um, hmm, how should I do this? This? No, that's yeah. not this. No, that's yeah. something else I'm looking for. Okay, I don't want to lose your time. Uh, let, let's see uh, later. Let's see later. I think yeah. we can log in now. Yeah, we can log in now. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's log in there. No, yes. So we have an account, so we need to wait, uh, wait, sign wait, in. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry, wait. Wait. I have something right. here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just here, in terms of the size of the input fields, it's pretty small. Um, maybe that could be increased since you don't have much else on the page anyway. Yeah. Lorica, I let you lead because that was uh, you the leader at the beginning. Uh, you can continue, ah. sorry. Yeah, sure, but you have the login details, no? Oh, yeah, so you want me to <laughs> enter it. Okay. Yes, please. So while you type, uh, can I know that the Bestir Collective uh, logo is very small? Yeah. I didn't notice it the first few times I looked at the screen. Yeah. Uh, and then the login 
text is very not vertically centered. Yeah. Yeah, the, actually the login, um, the entire login screen, the, only the background image was changed in the last three months, but the entire stuff has to go through a redesign and, and, and okay. it's, it's in the in the backlog. And, and if you click on forgotten yeah. button, that's the same problem on the send button. Yeah. Yeah. So let's enter, okay. Let's enter this. You might want to double check also the selection uh, carrot because when you select something, yeah, you see that the, the handles of the selection are black. You cannot yeah. see them. Yeah. So that should be relatively easy to fix, but it, yeah. it makes it easier for people that to copy paste. Definitely. True. Sure. Okay, I'm adding the password. Sorry, it takes just a few seconds. Our super secret test account. Of course. <laughs> How much money do you have in there? I we mean, it's already the honest money. We already bought a few. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> it's just a few. <laughs> okay. So, Lorica, I let you continue if it's okay for you. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, um, yeah. So now I guess we can go into more detail. So let's have a look first at the main flow of selecting a product and looking at the product detail page. Uh, ah, the scrolling here. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So, um, yeah, let's just look at one of these fun, beautiful shoes. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Okay. So again, I mean, it looks really clean and nice with the visual hierarchy and everything. Um, and also like the parallax scroll, I, yeah, I think this is really nice. Um, just see, there was something here. Yeah. One thing that I've noticed that's missing throughout the app, again, one of these like small detail things is the edge scroll indicator or end scroll indicator, which you usually have on Android with us, uh, um, Thing that comes up from the bottom on iOS, yeah. you have this bounciness. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's um, missing. I have yeah. a couple of small things here. If uh, so, the first one is when you get into the page at the beginning. So in this state, there's no buy button here. Like it only comes in when you start scrolling in after yeah, a while. All the so that might not be great for you for conversion. Yeah. So you want to make sure that that is up almost yeah, like, all the time. Yeah, like a quick buy. Like, yeah, even yeah. having a, as a as a fab at the top that then goes away when you scroll up, that's fine because at that point you have the button down here and you can even coordinate them coming in and out as you scroll. Uh, and the other thing that I wanted to point out was like in, the, in this listing is kind of okay, but the the three lines underneath the price, the 36 EU, very good condition and leather. In other listings, it's impossible to understand what those three things are. So maybe you have an icon or some text that tells me like size, condition, and material. Is it a free text from the sellers, the resellers? Or is it like driven by a formula that they filled before? Uh, which, which which stuff are you? Ah, okay, you're talking about the, the size, the condition, and the... Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's basically uh, when the seller enters stuff uh, in the deposit form of the sale page, it's, it's, it comes out from there. Yeah. Are these fixed attributes or free text? Uh, these are not fixed. Uh, yeah, they are fixed attributes. It's like uh, okay. you have yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, uh, so, uh, go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. Then turn off. Okay. Sorry. Well, it's just um, just one small thing to maybe for the designer to look at is, uh, I mean, for this page is still okay when there's a lot of text. Uh, as you scroll through, you will see tons of different font style, tons of different font size yeah. um, across the whole page, which yeah. make it really hard to um, for the user to focus on uh, some important um, points yeah. or some important things for, for, for the listing. So I thought something will be nice to look at to, to how to optimize or reduce the amount of different font style, font size, um, to, to make it more easy to consume. 
Yeah. But one thing that I really like is that when I tested on my app, uh, when the description is in French, I think, it actually offers me translation, which I really, really like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there is a little button and you click. Yeah. Yeah, I really like that. So, so, so that's 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 a really nice touch. Yeah. Thank you. On the typography front, I have to say I really like the fonts that you're using. They're really nice. It seems though sometimes, especially in the cards, when you when you are in a, in a listing in a list of listings, uh, they they tend to have a bunch of text, different things, all stuck together, mm -hmm. all with the same size, all with the same color. They're not really glanceable. So maybe you, you want to uh, to improve that, and also it tends to. Uh, to ellipsize text because it's only one line, but they're small cards. Mm, yeah. And you have maybe one, two words tops, and it's not always enough to understand. So uh, making the, the information architecture and, and the hierarchy a bit clearer, especially using typography, as, uh, um, as we were saying earlier. That, that could improve glanceability a lot and then make it easier for people to, to use the app. Yeah, I totally agree with that. There needs to be like a, a, a proper design system in place to unify the entire typography. And, and yes, there is a lot of information in general in the app and not presented uh, in a systemic way or, or in a way to highlight some and not highlight the others. Yeah, well, very well, Edwin. Thank you. Thanks to you. I think, Monica, you want to continue? Or, or... Yeah, I, I don't have any other feedback at this point, so if you have anything... Yeah, I, I, I just checking my list, and I think there's just one uh, very small... Uh, I, I will take control of the uh, app. Um, yeah, just just a very minor thing, but uh, if you notice on the tab icons, uh, they have some of them have different weight of the outline. So it's something for your designer to look at to ensure that all this all the outline thickness is the same to make them feel more cohesive. Uh, because for example, in newsfeed, the middle line is very thin. Uh, which make it feel a little bit alienated uh, compared to the rest of the icons. And for example, uh, the top right, um, the, 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 the card, uh, actually that, 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 is, that doesn't feel like a card icon, but I, I understand that, that that is actually used from the website. Um, but again, like the, the whole icons uh, system in, in the app doesn't have a similar language in there. The, making them feel like uh, you know just uh, very different from each other. So I think that would be something good to look at to to to, to make them feel cohesive at least, not consistent, but at least cohesive. Okay. Cool. Um, I have another small thing. So what I was trying to show earlier was in the categories list. So um, if you go to brands, you can get to the point where you get to pages that are empty. Maybe don't show those brands. Like mm. as a user, I'm like, oh yeah, I really like A Lab. I don't know what it is, but I'm sure yeah. someone does. <laughs> <laughs> like I really like A Lab. Oh, there's nothing. So maybe only <laughs> show categories when you have content in there. I, I understand this might be a list that you have on your device, like a static list rather than something that yeah. comes from the backend, but it might be worth having that populated uh, at runtime yeah. with, with the content that you actually have. Or maybe what you can do is to add a, a, um, an action button in this uh, empty state uh, proposing to follow the brand. Because I know that you have a very interesting notification system into the app. I asked my wife actually that she used already. She bought something on your on your really? service, and she told me that there is something that is really interesting. That when you like a product like this, uh, then if the same product, uh, so you don't buy this one, but the, uh, the same product arrives and the price changes and things like that, you get notifications. Yeah. So this could be very interesting to be included into your uh, uh, features. Yeah. 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 Like a follower, like. If, if there is nothing, then just follow the entire brand. So exactly. Cool. Yeah. 
very valid point. Okay. Do we have other things to say? Oh yes, uh, just one last thing. Like uh, sure. I just recommend. so I just noticed. I'm not sure whether it's a network issue, but uh, I noticed that uh, when you tap on add to back, it's actually take quite some time before it reacts. Uh, so let me just try. It will yes, take sir. some time, and then you know, like just three, four, five. So, sometimes even twelve seconds. Yeah. So that that was not the the, the best uh, UX, I would say. Because I, I, I mean, from user point of view, like uh, I, I, I have no idea why I have to wait for it to add. Yeah. So if there's something that in your backend that you have to do, maybe you yeah. want to do it in your backend, but yeah. you already show it that it's already added. Yeah. 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 yeah it's, it's it's mostly the API which is uh, uh, a bad guy here, but I agree that we can inform our user yeah. about something, not just looking at the screen. Yeah. 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 I mean, you can have a really nice lo um, loading indicator in case yeah. you cannot avoid that load time. Yeah. yeah, something like, you know, having an animation like, oh, checking in stock if your goods still in stock, uh, whether the seller still wanted to let go, you know, something like that. Then, you know, a, a sense of successful of adding to the back. Yeah. Cool. Are we all set? Yep. Cool. Yeah, I think, yeah. Thanks a lot, Chailish, for your contribution again. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks for the great feedback. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, I think we don't have the dev for uh, smart contact, right? Mm, doesn't look like it. Yeah. So let's switch to, uh, sorry, it was um, evolution. Evo evolution. Evolution. Uh, so that's... Uh, uh, Kiridin, he will join us very soon. Yeah. Hey. Hello, everybody. Hey. Hello. Hey. Hello. Hello. Can you speak? Can you speak? Hello. I think we have, big, we have a big, big echo coming from you, maybe. Um, Can you put headphones on, maybe? Yeah. Thank you. Hello? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay. Perfect. Great. Okay. Uh, Taylor, I propose that you lead the, the distribute. Sure, sure, sure. And carry uh, maybe, oh, sorry. Uh, we, maybe we will let the uh... The, the owner to introduce about the app or introduce himself at least. <laughs> okay, so uh, my name is Kerdin and uh, I'm an Android developer at uh, Capgemini. And I developed just uh, this small application uh, from when uh, uh, a few weeks ago, sorry, uh, for my uh, uh, Can you hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, uh, for my free time. So yeah. just it's about uh, COVID-19. Uh, the purpose of this application, it's about to uh, develop uh, a small application with a good uh, architecture with the best practice uh, to share with, uh, you know, uh, so more general developers and uh, all, all Android developers maybe and have feedback about uh, architecture and maybe about design also. So I developed it uh, very quickly, about three weeks, I think. Uh, just it. so it's about uh, evolution of uh, coronavirus. Uh, you have uh, two parts uh, in the screen. Uh, uh, actually, you have only one screen. Uh, at the top of the screen, you have the uh, um, total number of cases of uh, the world, and uh, in the bottom, you have a list of the country, so you can scroll uh, for uh, country. And sorry, uh, it's uh, only in French because my source is in French. I, I retrieved my data source in uh, a French government uh, site, and uh, I wanted 
uh, a very quick, uh, quickly application, so I haven't any more time to uh, do uh, uh, good things. No risk, yeah. really. Yeah. So, uh, so thanks for the information. So let me just uh, start. Um, yes. So I think uh, the app is uh, is a simple one, but uh, I would say it really look quite nice. Um, so one plus one for that. Um, uh, the only one thing that is that uh, it's in dark mode. So one thing about dark mode is that uh, you have to be very careful about the contrast of the you know of your element. So I noticed that the whole app is almost in the similar colors, where you don't have a very specific uh, colors to to differentiate between the surface, uh, the background, the card. Um, making them feel blended all together, so uh, there's no uh, uh, there's no uh, architecture or, or in terms of hierarchy for the information. So that's one thing to improve. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm speaking from design point of view, of course. Like yes. technical point of view, it to SAP and uh, and uh, and uh, AI, yeah, of course. Um, but uh, the dark mode uh, is uh, is a very it's, it's, it's a very hard thing to uh, do correctly. So if you want to go for it, of course, uh, but definitely take care of the contrast and all that stuff. Um, just a few things that I noticed uh, when I play around with the app just now. Um, first is that the top bar feels like a search bar for some reason. Yes. Oh. So uh, I don't think it's really needed to have a card uh, you know, there uh, to make it simple as well. Um, and and this chart, uh, I'm not sure if you say okay. So this chart is actually uh, uh, in terms of UX is a little bit of uh, an issue which uh, where you can improve. I noticed that you would actually put in the left right to navigate. Um, so one thing about this left right button is uh, first is of course the contrast is not there. Um, it's quite hard to spot sometimes uh, when you're using it. And uh, it actually should support the long press to continuously navigate. So for example, let's say I long press on this button, I would expect it to keep moving until a certain date, but it just it just takes my input for once. So that's something that uh, you can look into it. But the most important one that I see is, um, this is probably a little bit technical, I'm, I'm not sure. So what, Usually on the mobile, when you do, when you want to navigate on chart, you usually will do tap and then you drag, okay? But uh, on the device, when it's very easy when you start to scroll a little bit, and then it's actually break that yes. drag. So I was thinking probably it's, it's more like when you are in that chart dragging, you should stop uh, accepting scrolling from other sources so the user can keep uh, navigating around the, the chart. Um, so that's one uh, major UX issue that I, that I saw. Um, and in terms of informa information architecture, is uh, I noticed that this card and this row are actually related. So basically, if you tap on Spain, I think, then you will see the numbers. Um, so it's actually interrelated, but the design or, or the way how it lay out feels like they are different things. Um, so that's one thing to improve um, as well. And I, I realize that uh, the, 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 the role of the countries are, are arranged in a way based on the total number of case, I think, from the highest number to the lowest number. Yes. Um, it would be really nice uh, because Let's say for me in Malaysia, I will want to use the app. And every time I open the app, I always see the first one in US. So maybe it will be an additional function, you know, for you to add like a, you can pin a country to show as the first country. So at least I will be able to see how much cases, how many cases in my country um, very easily. Instead of like I have to scroll or search for it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and the last point is really small thing, but it's more like when you tap on the search, um, the keyboard should already show up. Like, yes, this is that, an issue. And, again, 
and uh, the keyboard doesn't even show up <laughs> in emulator, but it doesn't matter. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much from me. But I think color-wise, I really like it. I would say it, it re looks really nice. It's just that uh, uh, need to take care about the contrast if you are doing in dark mode um, to, to make it uh, easier to scan when, you, when you're using the app. Yeah. That's all for me. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your feedback. Anyone else want to? Yeah, I have a few, a uh, few feedback. Uh, so if we yes. get out from the app and we are going to simulate the first opening, uh, I think we told about uh, later, but let me know. So if you open the the app for the first time, oh yeah, uh, so it's loading and then you have this dialogue um, appearing, yes. and it's really breaking the flow of the user. Um, uh, so actually, um, so it, it just tells that uh, this is, this is uh, when the, the, sorry, how the data are refreshed. Uh, am I clear if I tell that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And um, and this dialogue, um, which is th that's an inf interesting information. I, I like the idea, and I will tell about another thing I like in terms of uh, data and presentation of data that you are doing um, and transparency. But you have a card design right here, and this message, even if it's very important, uh, it doesn't deserve a full dialogue breaking the flow, but having a top card that could be dismissed by the user with a small. Uh, cross or swipe whatever you want could be very interesting just to not break the flow because the, that's the very okay. very first uh, yeah. second that your user uh, is arriving into the app of course uh, you can also you can also have a card at the bottom at the very bottom that always tells you when was the last time the data was updated so it's always there yeah, yeah. that's maybe yeah. more transparency sorry Luke, I go. Yeah, okay, no, like, um, should you really at some point actually need a dialogue that is that breaking, it should still follow the theme of your app. So not being bright white maybe, but a, a colorful, a more toned down one. So three, three, uh, three ways to change <laughs> the dialogue <laughs> right now for you. Uh, an another thing I like, it's in French, um, but it's these texts. Actually, you tell where the data is coming from. And yes. considering the current situation in the world in terms of information and transparency, that's very interesting because it gives all the data and information to people to uh, counter check what you are telling and the data in this. And, and this is a very, very good idea, really. Uh, mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. Actually, this is not the most sexiest thing in the app, and I, but I think that's the thing I prefer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, thank you. On this screen, just one small... Sorry. Uh, yeah, no yeah. problem. Just one small nitpick is when you scroll, you see that there's a margin that is... <laughs> just nitpicking, but uh, it's uh, uh, it's an yes. evil, so you know the bottom part, uh, the top part. There's a margin that is not being uh, removed, or you know, yeah. Sure. On, on yeah, nitpicking, like, go, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, no. Uh, also nitpicking. It looks like the the scroll edge is not showing here either. Yeah. Uh, I may. Yeah. 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 Uh, what I wanted to nitpick is that the the upper title and the first line of the text are pretty much the same so maybe just can repeat it yes because you have a purple and then you have a purple the application just uh, say it once it's enough <laughs> i love hearing you speaking in french uh, my terrible <laughs> french accent thank you no no no, 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 no. that's great i love it uh, anyways um so yes uh, there are a few things i wanted to add it uh, to add sorry if you stay, uh, do a long press on the um, on the, 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 the pie chart, you have this uh, chart appearing. I think, uh, no, yeah, it's not clickable, right? Oh, it's not a long press, a single press is enough. Just click, yeah. Uh, yeah, so the, the animation is a little bit long. I would say that having half the time should be enough. I don't know what you are thinking, the others. I will simply have two different cards for the two different graphs. Why not? Yeah, different way of transition because um, 
I don't know, like, you know, if you remember the back, uh, back then in material system, it should not be flipping. <laughs> Yeah, and also with this animation, the, 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 the shadow is a little bit strange. It's stranger on the emulator, but uh, on, it's still on the device. You don't have a, the glitch in the middle, but you have the shadow that is a little bit uh, weird. It's not a perfect effect. Yes, it, it, it's actually an issue, and, uh, uh, and, and I'm on it. In some device, uh, this, uh, this animation crashes. Okay. Actually, so I'm, I'm on it, yes. So just <laughs> another reason to not use it. Use it. Uh, and also, it's very, uh, yes. uh, not, not, it's, not, <laughs> it's not that much uh, discoverable, discoverable. <laughs> because, um, so it's a click, but there is no ripple on the card. And I mean, it's not really good to have this kind of ripple on content that you want to show that that is rich. So I would say that, yeah, maybe two cards, maybe, I don't know, uh, a switch or something. I don't know. But there is something to do on okay. that. Uh, okay. And uh, do I have all the things to say? Oh yes, uh, if you you cannot long press on the button. Okay, first if you click on the, I mean I don't know if it's a bug or not, but uh, if you long press on the button, it doesn't like continues to yeah. to to move. It would be interesting to have like uh, you know the 300 milliseconds timer, and after if you remain uh, pressed on the button, then you will have like a uh, yes sure. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, yes, sure. For this reason, I allowed also the scroll on this graph. So there's uh, the, the scroll and uh, the, the two buttons. Cool. Because it's really hard to uh, focus on one date uh, only with the scroll. So I added these two buttons. I see. Oh, okay. I thought it, it was because uh, a user that is a, a normal user would not be able to scroll to, I mean, to swipe from here to here. Oh, I did it. Yes, so, because yeah, with, uh, the... with, yes, with the real, real finger, it's so hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got <laughs> the problem too. But, uh, and I, I totally agree with Taylor. You should block the scroll uh, on the graph when it's uh, uh, focused. And it will solve all your uh, UX problem on this. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, uh, do you have something? If you have other things to say, uh, Fox? I, I do have one thing, which is um, I think the app is very nice. It looks like I, I love the color palette, mostly because I love yellow, but that's fine. Uh, <laughs> so I might be biased. Uh, one thing I wanted to say, I think one problem that you have shown this data on a cellular phone device is that it's going to be tiny. And this, the text on the X axis, I cannot read it even on my computer. So even, I would try to find uh, a, a different way to display it and or I would try to find a way to allow people to tap a graph and show it full screen in landscape, so you have more room for, for data. Uh, that could partially solve the problem and also take you out of the recycler view so you don't have the scrolling problem anymore. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think yeah, one, one general, um, yeah, I mean, uh, Seth, you're definitely right. So I think one, one general rule that we usually use for caption text uh, in material system, I think is, is 12 or 11 uh, SP. So definitely don't go anything lower than that. Uh, I think for yours is nine, nine SP or something like that. So that's really, really small, uh, which, which probably because it's that small, I didn't notice it at all. <laughs> so, so yeah, uh, it's, it's more than 11 SP because IDE uh, display and, uh, you know, warning when it's uh, less than uh, 11 SP. And it's uh, studio display warning, so I think it's uh, more than 11 SP. It looks but smaller, it. but yeah. Um, but in uh, any case, like maybe the graph render is the, the, the text size based on making that fit. But I was going to sure. say that in this graph, you're actually showing 22nd of January as the start date. And at that level of granularity, January 2020 or just January would be enough or just Jan or something like that, so you could reduce it a little bit. Um, yes. From my side, there might be some things that are lost in translation, but we have the number of total cases. 
um, maybe it could say worldwide somewhere just to, as opposed to the US, which is underneath, uh, if that's not clear to everyone. Um, and then in terms of, I mean, you have really nice graphs, you have nice animations. Um, one thing that I would consider with the numbers up here is that maybe you could make them bigger, like um, um, infographic style, somehow that they're key visuals, so to sort of make them stand out a bit more, just playing around with that. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, the, the one thing that I struggle a little bit with is this navigation here at the bottom, like switching, switching these ones out. Um, maybe, I'm not sure, since they, on a small device, I guess they might even show up below the edge of the screen, so you might not even notice them. Um, and if it's important to be able to switch, then maybe they could show up higher or maybe be sticky or something like that. I don't know, but just some, some point of consideration. Maybe you can move them above the, the graph instead of having them below. Yeah. Not sure. Um, and then just from these ones, uh, if you compare the two graphs, um, the highest graph is always the same height, but you have different values, so it's difficult to get a comparison. It might be intentional if you want to compare just the values for Spain, for example, but if you want to compare Spain to the US in this graph, you don't get that picture quickly or easily. Yes. But overall, it looks, looks cool. Yeah, just time. one last design, just one last design details like that. <laughs> um, if you look at the selected uh, borders uh, on the country, um, the selection is rounded, but the card itself is not. Uh, yes. <laughs> so it makes it feel a little bit of, um, you know, something to improve, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, sure. Thank yeah. you very much for your advice. Okay. So you will got the app in, in three weeks, right? Uh, uh, yes, maybe more with uh, the first uh, commits for architecture and true choice of uh, technology. But yes, maybe three or four weeks. Nice. And uh, the, the project is uh, on open source. I will share the, the link. Nice. Thank you yes, very much. A few developers already uh, published the, uh, the, the, the link to the app in the chat. Really, if you're free to do it, definitely. Okay, sure. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Bye -bye. Yeah. <laughs> goodbye. Uh, we have 10 minutes left, and we will invite Bruce to join us with the last app. Oh, Bruce, do you hear us? Yeah, can you, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, cool. Let's see, you didn't appear on the on the on the live for now. Okay. Edouard, uh, can the people uh, hear Bruce? Yes, yes. Don't worry. Okay, cool. Okay. So, um, should I do the last, or do you want? Sorry, Sorry. Go for it. Okay. Go for it. I'm going for it. So, uh, Bruce, can you tell us a little bit about what is this app? What is this project? Sorry. And, uh, yeah. Okay. And a little bit about you. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, first, uh, I'm not a professional Android developer. I'm a software engineer, but uh, I don't work on Android on my daily basis. But uh, I develop this app on a daily basis, more uh, as a hobby. Uh, the app is called uh, Android. It started uh, nearly nine years ago, and I took the lead as a project about five years ago. Android is a free and open source ad blocker, so its goal is to uh, block unwanted advertisements and uh, in application or when you are browsing on internet. Uh, for me, it's not it's not free to to block income from the developer, but more how to uh, give more control and privacy for users uh, to understand really what happened on their device. Uh, so the app will uh, block and what you request. It can show you what your device is really connected to, and uh, you can decide what you what you want to do or 
was there was really cool person so like that um yes it Yeah, yeah, okay. not anymore. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's start the app. So I click on the button. Oh, okay. Oh, you already started it. Yeah, 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 but uh, okay. you know, it's cleaned. Let's clean it. Oh, sorry. Let's clean it. Okay, so this this is the first page, uh, the welcome page of the app. Uh, so um, the idea is to set up the application, and you have two ways to set it up. First, you have to uh, be a root and to leave uh, root access to the application by clicking on the, clicking on this button, and then you can use if you are just a simple uh, a non rooted device, uh, use a VPN. Uh, right now. Um, Genuation devices are rooted and they install SuperSU to administrate the SU, su rights to okay. the device. And uh, this app is already granted. Just to let okay. you know. So I'm going to click on root okay. and then I choose. There is something I, I noticed. So if I click again, yeah. Oh, there is this message. Okay, just like a, um, yeah, a that's same. Similar. VPN part, uh, it's not. Uh, there is no connection to a VPN server or stuff like that. I just use the VPN API in order to filter DNS request, but uh, yeah, it's safe in a server. Your, your all your data is not set on the server or stuff like that. It's a local proxy, basically. Yes, that's all. Uh, okay, just, that's just a disclaimer, and uh, you can switch the bus. Uh, the only thing that I, uh, I, I feel a little bit strange with uh, is this. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh. Okay, first, you can you bypass... the bug. <laughs> <laughs> so, first feedback. Anyways, uh, but if I do it again, there's another thing I want to show you. Clear the storage. And then... Open. And you see that here I didn't decide any uh, uh, option for now, yeah. and I still have this... Uh, um, view pager, uh, paginator, I don't know what you call that, but you yeah, know, yeah. these uh, little dots. And, I, and I, I was expecting to swipe or having things, so I think that you can just dismiss them and let them appear when you display the next button. Yeah. It will be uh, less weird. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And to add to that, you could even drop them all in all and just have previous and next as buttons at the bottom, since this is a guided process and not something you should just swipe through to learn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah super user granted because uh, we did it already and, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. that's on the super super app. Anyways, so I click on next. So it's syncing. By the way, downloads ad networks to block the, from online source. You can customize them later in the setting. I like the idea of uh, you explaining the user what you are downloading. Uh, yeah, ideally you could use a determinate progress bar instead of an indeterminate one. If you're downloading files, you should know how big they are. Interesting. So that I don't, because otherwise I have no idea, is it going to be five seconds, 60 seconds? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And if it takes like uh, a, a while, you will uh, do that on, on, uh, on through a uh, sorry a notification for the uh, service and things like that. It would be very useful. Yeah. If it can take more than a few seconds. Yes. Uh, support you. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a very important thing. So it's a, it's a good thing. Uh, donate on people. What's the behavior of this? And then uh, just uh, uh, yeah, just saying for people. Okay. Uh, may I may I add something there? Sure, sure. So one thing is the previous was a step in the process where you didn't well you had to confirm when you downloaded all the files when it had synced. Um, here there's the next button and there's really nothing for me to do here. So you might as well show maybe more information on this page already if you have something to show. Um, but also, the, the information on the next page is maybe not what you want to show a user the first time they're installing the app. Yes, it's of course, you need to be supported, but maybe there's a better way to ask for it or a better time in the journey. All right. 
Yeah, yeah I agree. It shouldn't be in the uh, onboarding. Maybe after the fifth time the user opens the app, or after a week that they use it, or something, then you can ask for support. It's more more likely for people to be happy with it at that point rather than on the first use. Yeah. The main idea uh, behind the, the welcome screen is uh, the attract to be there uh, a firearm for yet. I mean, you install it, you set up it, and you can never come back if you don't want because everything will be updated in background and just you, you don't care anymore about the app. Mm -hmm. mm, it totally makes sense, uh, especially with uh, people that are dis dismissing ads. I think, uh, I think, I mean, that's a feeling a big part of them uh, don't want to be annoyed by uh, uh, things and having a notification later on that is popping, asking for money. It's not a good, uh, a good idea, a good idea, but I totally agree with Lorica. Uh, if you are done learning something, it's cool to tell about that. But if the yeah. user can do another action at the same time, it's even better. Maybe you can present this support me as a, as a card on the main application page, uh, even as a one-off the first time you open the app. So you do, you have the first selection uh, between root and VPN, you download stuff, you go to the main application screen, people can look at it and they also have the support call to action there and then they can dismiss it if they want. Definitely. Yeah. Um. I have one last thing for the onboarding, and that was on the very first screen. Um, before any selection was made, uh, can I just swipe back? Sure, oh. sure. Oh, you, you, oh, okay, sorry. Okay, um, so here, before anything was selected, it didn't quite... I, I didn't get that I needed to select something. And I know that it says so in the text here, but maybe that could be clear, like, please select your mode, step one, or something like that, to make it even more clear. Yeah, it's a feedback I already had, but uh, I struggled to find a way how to represent it on the screen, other than by putting text. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there's a lot of way. But uh, one thing uh, that I also, for, for people who have privacy concern, uh, which I do when I first started, um, because I, my device is not rooted, so I was thinking how the VPN, which VPN is being used, and how VPN is going to be used to block my ad. So maybe at this point, yeah, that some some sort of explanation would be really nice because like what you said, you only use the proxy, you are not using the VPN. So a little bit of, you know, like a simple explanation, like uh, we are not using VPN, we are not selling your data, you know, it would be nice. What do you think about like a, a, a list with bullet points, extremely clear about uh, uh, what they are not doing and what they are doing? So I, I like the fact that right now it gives you the glance, like the pros and cons of each approach, but maybe you could have uh, more information link yeah. on the on the buttons that yes. users can tap to get more information. You know, like uh, a, a little bit like the summaries you, ha you have for the um, all the privacy stuff. A few mm -hmm. apps are doing it very well with a icon and a very uh, 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 small sentence. I think we have to speed up because uh, uh, Edouard have to leave in two minutes. <laughs> okay, so let's so, jump into the app, huh? Yeah, let's go, go. Jump, jump into the app and we will take uh, one or two more minutes, Edouard, please, to, uh, to, to, to uh, wrap up and say goodbye. Uh, okay, uh, so the idea is that, okay, I, I already have like, oh yeah, that, uh, okay, the blocked thing here is the number of, um, I would say website or uh, um, yeah, that's it. providers, and then you have a load redirect. Red red okay, how could I test the app right now? Should I uh, use Chrome? Yeah, I think you can. Yeah, for example. Uh, I don't I think have Chrome installed. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. One minute. <laughs> Shit. He's going to fire us. Oh no, it's pretty fast. <laughs> it's Jenny Motion. <laughs> Running on the cloud. <laughs> oh. Okay, no thanks. Bruce, I need to load any website. Uh, uh, AndroidPolice.com, maybe? AndroidPolice.com? Yeah. Okay. 
Oh, yes. I, I'm thinking about one thing also. There is a, the, I think the light mode of, of Chrome is enabled by default. Yes. Oh. So it, it might be possible that all your traffic are already routed through, through Google uh, process. Do you think that they are dismissing all the ads? I don't think yes. so. No, uh, no, but I think we can't uh, we can't override them because oh. all traffic are coming from Google's. Uh, Taylor, I'm sorry, uh, what do you want to say? No, I'm saying that uh, when you see in Red Police oh. the ad is already gone because if you don't, you will see a lot of ads in, in this page. Okay, good to know. So basically, if we come back into, oops, sorry, into the app, here it is. Uh, nothing is happening. Oh, Let's what, what did it. you expect? Oh, I don't know, like uh, you blocked uh, hundreds of. Uh, 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 ads well, today. I think the confusion here is that the the blocked number is not the number of requests that are blocked, but the number of entries in the blacklist. Yes, that's right. So maybe that's the difference. Ah. And the yeah. same goes for allowed, which is I guess whitelisted, and redirect, which I don't know uh, what that means. But okay, cool. That's a that's a good point. If that's the case, then an easy change of wording would help. If it's called blacklisted and whitelisted, then I would have understood it that way. Yeah, yeah. And I think this, this one is more like a login when your browser is requesting ads, and then you will log uh, which provider is actually asking for displaying the ads, I think. Yes. Uh, I think that works pretty well. Uh, I tried just now, and uh, I, I'm surprised. <laughs> Good. Uh, okay. One small thing, even we have to stop now. Uh, I don't think you need to, to show the version number on the top right all the time. Uh, if you have like a help menu or something like that, that's probably like settings or whatever. Yeah, you have preferences. You can probably just put it there at the bottom. At the bottom, it's very nice. Okay. Good. I think we have to uh, yeah. wrap up all this. Thanks a lot, Bruce, again, and thanks to Thank all you. our contributors to uh, uh, this uh, uh, app review. Um, I hope you will enjoy the rest of the, the event, and uh, we'll see, see you on the, the next talks. See you, and thanks a lot to all of you. Thank you, thanks. thank you, Seb, thank, thank you, Taylor, and you, thank you, thank you to everyone. Thank you, everyone. Alex, as well, we love you. Bye bye. Goodbye.